Back another episode of Conspiracy Decoded. I'm your host, the sworn enemy of the lizard people, Juice Jennings. A lot to talk about in this episode. Got a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. I want to talk about uh, the fallout of what happened at Conspiracy Sport Pro last weekend. Let's talk about that crowd or the lack of a crowd. That house was down. Woo! That's what happens when you don't put Juice Jennings on the poster. And after that, uh, we had juiced that place to the roof at the previous show with the Conspiracy Crate. I think people just, maybe their minds, it's not, their minds were still blown. They were still at home trying to process what they saw. And they did not come out to Props Brewery last weekend. And they all thought... You know what really happened is they all thought, well, Juice just got stuffed in a box, taken off to Area 51. There's no way in hell he's going to be at this show. So what's the point? What's the point in going? But they were wrong because I was there. I was there. But you know who wasn't there? That piece of crap, El Cachi, the the so-called newly crowned junior heavyweight champion. El Cachi was nowhere to be found. And if you hung around to the very end of the last episode of Conspiracy Decoded, you saw that little Easter egg I threw in at the back at the back end of it. You saw what happened to El Cachi. He got abducted by aliens. So save it. Don't point the finger at me. Don't say Juice Man. You and your new best friends, the aliens, totally had him abducted. I don't know anything about it. I had nothing to do with that. And I asked my friends, my intergalactic brothers, they don't know anything about it either. So it's entirely possible that somebody else swooped down and beamed him up and took him God knows where, but we had nothing to do with it. But I hope he shows up soon because he's got a, a title to defend, right? But isn't that funny that uh, the, the so-called loser of the Conspiracy Crate match shows up the very next show to put in the work, entertain the fans, and keep fighting that conspiracy, but the so-called winner, nowhere to be found. So if you know anything about the Location of El Cachi, please call the uh, anti conspiratorial hotline, tip us off, let us know what's going on. But since I was there at uh, Props Tap Room, let's talk about what happened there. Let's talk about what happened at the very beginning of that show. The thing that everybody wants to see when they pay money for a pro wrestling event a contract signing between the Lizard King himself, Ray Fury. And my partner in the heavyweight party, Ryan Ocean, signing the contract, making it official for the next show in December, the finals of the heavyweight championship tournament, where they're going to lock it up and crown a new champion. This was a little confusing, The uh, all the stuff that was going on in this, in this encounter here. See, they were going to choose each other's opponents. They were going to pick each other's opponents for that night. But if the the opponent that they picked, stick with me here, could beat them, they took their spot in the main event. But also, it was beat the clock. So whoever won that match in the shortest amount of time got to pick the stipulation for that title match in December. You still with me? So Ray Fury picked... A guy that hasn't he hasn't been in combat for a while. He hasn't been in the pro wrestling scene for a while. He's been laying low. And that just so happens to be the guy that I partnered with way back when against the, the Aryan Brotherhood known as the Dirty Blondes. The guy that took the pin in that tag match with Fuhrer Parker. Go back and watch that episode. And he was so heartbroken, he left pro wrestling for... For about a year, maybe longer, and that's Zane Stevens. He decided to come back, and he was Ray Fury's pick to take on Ryan Ocean. Ryan Ocean giving the people what they want, keeping it in the heavyweight party, chose, you guessed it, the Juice Man to take on the Lizard King one more time and take him out. Heading into that heavyweight championship match. So Ocean was able to defeat 
Zane in, I don't know, five or six minutes. And then it was time for the main event. The Mr. Main Event of Combat Sport Pro, the guy that's always there to bring it home, that's the Juice Man, versus El Lizardo, Ray Fury, who was, if you haven't watched the last episode, totally a lizard person, and that's why he wears that mask. We locked it up in the main event. Beat the clock challenge. He was, he had to win his match in about six minutes and change. And what can he say? He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it because the Juice Man came to play and, and wasn't going down without a fight. So could not beat me in the allotted time, which means Ryan Ocean is picking the stipulation. And yeah, whatever. Ray Fury won again. We're not going to get into it. So there you have it. That sets up the, the main event for uh, the December show at Combat Sport Pro. They're going to crown a new heavyweight champion, Ryan Ocean, very, very smartly setting the stipulation that Ray Fury cannot come off the top rope in that match. He is banned from his aerial cruiserweight moves, and he's going to have to slug it out heavyweight style with Ryan Ocean. So we're going to see what happens in December and who's coming away with that heavyweight championship. And let's not forget my epic, awesome entrance for this main event with my intergalactic brothers showing up again two times in a row. We're a package deal now. And now you know that when the Juice Man shows up, the aliens are not too far behind. They did leave in the middle of the match, though. I was looking for them. Maybe that's why, maybe that's what uh, gave Ray Fury the chance to get the upper hand on me. Revolt Pro Wrestling. The Juice Man. I'm not just coming back. I'm coming back to take it over, baby. Because guess what? Juice Jennings is in the main event at Revolt Pro. And I'm taking on the newly crowned heavyweight champion, Gabe Zilla himself. The man who took the Revolt title from my buddy Ryan Ocean at the last show. He's coming in. He's got a lot to prove. He won one hell of a, a street fight, putting Ryan Ocean through some thumbtacks to win the strap at the last show. But guess what? You thought that was hard? You got to lock it up with the Juice Man. And I am hungry. I am starving for some championship gold in Revolt Pro. Hey, I, I just like to take a, not like just like to get a win in Revolt Pro because I've been going there for about three years now, and I've got like a reverse Undertaker streak still winless in Revolt because they are the dirtiest, most corrupt organization in professional wrestling. But I'm going to end it all. I'm going to switch it all around. When I walk into Foley, Alabama, the Gulf Coast Music Hall. And I walk out with a strap around my waist. What better way to break this losing streak than to take down the biggest, baddest, scariest, strongest guy they've got on the roster. This guy is like a, he's a legit strongman competitor. Well, guess what? I'm strong too. I'm, uh, I'm in the weight... I'm in the weight room clanging and banging all the time. They got a great weight room here at Area 51, and I've uh, really been putting in the work. So you think you've got the, well, let's be honest. Yeah, you do have the strength advantage, but I got the brain advantage because I'm the smartest man in professional wrestling. And I've also got some other tricks up my sleeve. So Gabe Zilla, you think you got a cakewalk coming your way? You are dead wrong because Gabe Zilla is going to lock it up with Juice Kong. We're going to tear that place down. And when the smoke clears, you can bet your bottom dollar that Big Bad Juice Daddy is walking out the Revolt Heavyweight Champion. And at the end of the day, you will know that it ain't a coincidence. It's a conspiracy, Daddy!